there is no age cutoff that we talk of for doing IVF. As we have discussed, IVF means you take the lady's eggs and the man, the partner's sperms and form embryos. Now the embryo quality is going to depend on the lady's eggs and the man's sperms. So if the lady is higher aged, that means there is a high chance that her egg quality may not be good. So then the embryos will not either form or will form badly. In either case, the pregnancy will not result. So what we rather say to our patients is that we can definitely try with your eggs, whatever your age may be, but be mentally prepared that higher the age, the lesser is the chance of having an ongoing pregnancy and a healthy child. In other terms, there's another test that's come out recently. It's called AMH or anti-mullerian hormone, by which we can predict more accurately as to what is the egg reserve or possibly the egg quality for the lady. And by doing that test, we can then predict whether she is a good candidate to try with her own eggs or she should go for donor eggs. But all said and done, all women across all age groups have a right to try with their own eggs if they so desire to get a pregnancy of their choice. Natural conception happens when a lady forms an egg in either of her ovaries and that egg is released on the 13th or the 14th day of her cycle, is picked up by the fallopian tube and the egg stays put in the tube for 12 to 14 hours. And during this 12 to 14 hours, if she has intercourse with a partner and enough sperms can travel all the way up till the egg and fertilize it. So it's very important for a lady to conceive naturally to have healthy and what we say patent fallopian tubes, which is the tube is allowing the egg to enter from one side and the sperms to come from the other side so that the egg and the sperm can meet and get fertilized. However, in case the tubes are damaged, they are blocked or they have been surgically cut because of some reason, then there is no chance that the eggs and the sperms can meet each other. And then there is no way that she can get pregnant naturally. Happily, she does have the option of going for an IVF, where we take the eggs and the sperms outside of the body and make them meet together in a petri dish. Very unromantic, but then very practical. So this is another way where we can help them to conceive through IVF. But if the tubes are surgically tied, she has only one way of getting pregnant and that's IVF. Many times you will hear us talking about your day one, day two, day three, etc. The start of menses is your day one. For our understanding and our simplicity purposes, we tell you that if you menstruate or you start spotting on a day, that's your day one. But if you do so after 4 p.m. of the same day, that's your day zero and the next is a day one. It's not about why we are calling it day one and why we are calling it day zero. It's just to standardize the whole thing that we are calling the first day as day one and the next day as day two. What you need to remember is whenever you have your menses, depending on whether that's before 4 p.m. or after 4 p.m., you need to inform the phone number that has been given to you and accordingly come the next day for your mandatory blood tests and ultrasound. For most patients, you need to come to the clinic only on three or four occasions while your eggs are being grown or your stimulation is going on. You need to come every third or fourth day for an ultrasound to find out if the rate of growth and the number of follicles is optimum. That generally requires less than 10 minutes of time at the clinic. Sometimes you need to stay for longer for some blood tests if they have been ordered, but that's about it as far as monitoring in these days is concerned. <music>